Hello and welcome back to Tesla Me and My Model 3. So the other day I was contacted by a company called EV Armor, which do a range of different console wraps for EVs, especially Teslas and the Model 3. And they asked me if I'd like to review one of their console wraps, which of course I said, yeah, that'd be great, send me one. Oh, and before I forget, also remember to subscribe and hit that notification button so that you get notified when I upload a new video. And feel free to use my referral code, which you can find in the description below, which will allow both of us to get 1,000 miles of free supercharging. And then if you pass on your referral when you buy your Tesla, you will get a chance to win a Founders Edition Model Y or a Roadster. So these wraps come in a range of different colours. Um, actually, I say a range of things, I think white or black, but different styles. And so these are, I've got them on my phone here, just so I don't miss any. There is carbon fibre black, matte black, um, satin black, or just brushed metal black. For the white, uh, I can only see two here. They may do some more, but on their website, they've got satin white and carbon fibre white. Uh, they also do some other accessories like... Uh, uh, what they're called organizer trays that you can put in so you can put your coins in and things like that so they have got a range of different things i i highly recommend you check out their site if you're thinking about adding a console wrap or any of the other accessories um because they do seem to do some great stuff but like i say i never heard of them before so this is the first time i'm going to review it this isn't this is going to be an unbiased review i have no idea how good the wrap is going to be but they did ask me what color that I'd like, and I said satin white. I was gonna go with carbon fiber, but then I just thought it might look a little bit tacky. And because I had the white interior, I thought let's go with the concept car look of the original concept car of the Model 3 with the white interior, and it had a white console. Um, so I thought, yeah, let's go with the white, uh, satin white. And so they've sent me this, and I'm gonna open it now, and let's see if it's any good. Okay, so let's uh, do an unboxing and see what we get in this envelope. So I've already torn off the thingy. Um, okay, there's one strip there. Uh, what else have we got? We've got, oh, that's cool. We've got some wipes, um, lens wipes, and a squeegee so you can get rid of the bubbles. And I'm guessing the rest of it is just the vinyl. Yep, here we have some more vinyl bits. Um, that's the cup holder vinyl bit. I don't know what that bit is, but it's another vinyl bit. Oh, a little, uh, I don't know if that's the instructions. I don't think it is the instructions. Though. And another little vinyl bit. I think that is it, guys. Uh, so here we go, center console wrap. Can you see it there? Yep, center console wrap kit. So four pieces of center console wrap, one free Tesla key card holder. Where's that? It must be in here. Oh, okay, it's that little clear thing, okay. Yeah, not the most expensive thing, but hey, it's still nice for them to throw that in because it is always annoying with your key card holder when you when your key card I mean when you you lose it. Uh, three surface wipes, one squeegee. Okay, and uh, in the un unlikely event of a mistake, purchases are covered by our free replacement. That's really cool. So basically, if you cock it up, they'll send you a replacement, which I, that is awesome. Um, I guess it all comes down to how easy it is to install now. But it does actually say fastest and easiest self-installation on the market. Guaranteed. Okay. Uh, there's no instructions on there. Um, just reading. Get it right on the first try with our specially designed pre-cut backing and transfer. Easy installation video walkthrough. Oh, there you go. So there's a, there's a video walkthrough. So what we do is I'll watch that first of all. Okay, so I've sped this up because... It says 20 minutes on the actual documents, but there's no way it took it took, it took an hour to do. So I've split it up, and I thought I'd just talk through what I was doing. So here I was using the uh, the cleaners to clean the actual uh, plastic, and I decided to do each segment one at a time. So I, I left the middle and the top piece and was just concentrated on the cup holder section here. And when I so I use these sort of side uh, sort of flap bits of pla uh, sort of like slightly adhesive sticky plastic to just hold it in place, and you're meant to line it up. But I was finding that because the edging of the actual backing paper was all a bit squiff and not not very straight itself, I couldn't find a way of aligning it really accurately. So that's one thing I think they could definitely improve on is by having the backing paper at least parallel and cut straight with the actual uh, vinyl itself, so you can see exactly how to line it up. Because uh, it was just quite tricky. And then the cup holder area, you're meant to sort of push in, which I'm doing with my fingers there, to sort of see 
if it's even on e both sides, top and bottom of the cup holder. But because you can't push it in much, you can't really get an exact feel of how how aligned it is. So actually what I would do in future if I was going to do it again would be to put a slit in the middle bit, which isn't vinyl, and so you can push down a bit further, so you can sort of feel the edges of the actual cup holder itself. Because there's just no way of telling exactly where the uh, where the cup holders lied lay uh, below the actual um, vinyl. Um, so I was happy in the end with where I positioned it, but like I said, it was really really difficult to tell exactly because the backing paper was so squiff and out of line with the actual vinyl. But I decided that would do, and so I started to peel back the paper. And they're in segments, so you peel back the first part and then you start using the squeegee to stick that. So I'd stuck that first part down, uh, which you can just about see in the bottom uh, right-hand corner there. I've just now stuck that down. And so then it was to, uh, time to peel off the next segment, which is where the cup holders are. And they say to keep the sticky um, sort of flap um, adhesive over the top in place because I guess it keeps a structural kind of... Um, uh, position for the for the cup holders whereas if you took off that that sort of uh, plastic over the top it would they'd, they'd be more difficult to position uh, when I was finally happy with that position I took that that plastic flat bit off and started to use the squeegee and now on the actual cup holders you're meant to um, oh actually no I'll say that in a minute because at the moment I'm just doing the very top part here as well so yeah, I'm just making sure there's no air bubbles and you use the squeeze, you tuck it down the sides as well. And you can push any sort of like overlapping vinyl down the sides of the trim and that all works really well. So yeah, here I'm now sort of rubbing around the edges. You start with the outside of the cup holders and you sort of work your way into the corners. Uh, so you start with the circular parts and then move into the center part with the corners. And that, that worked very well, except for I noticed that it was slightly out of line. If you look at the top part, where the cup holders is a black sort of line and it was just slightly longer on the bottom part of the cup holders so that kind of that was just i think just because i had that uh, paper back and it was really hard to position exactly where i wanted it and to be honest i don't know if you could actually get it much better on a second try either i just think it's one of those things you'd have to do quite a few times before you became an expert on it so here this is then the middle part and you start with the top section of the middle part and you basically peel off the paper and then follow it curves around slightly so you have to make sure that you follow that curvature very carefully now i i thought this was going to be quite easy but i actually it turned out it was really tricky it wasn't as tricky as the cup holder part but it, i still found it really tricky and one of the reasons why was because i'd i'd make sure it was lined up on the left hand side like i'm doing here then i'd go around and because it's final it would stretch a bit and by the time i got to the other side it was actually a bit too long on the other side so i'd have to pull it up again and then sort of overcompensate on one side because I knew that by the time I got to the other side it would have stretched and they'd now then be sort of kind of even. But it, it took me about three attempts to do that, which in the sped up video here, it kind of looks like I was doing it really easily, but it, it was definitely not easy. If you look at the timer, I'm already halfway in, half an hour into this uh, into this procedure. And then, then it was quite easy to uh, just to use the squeegee to flatten everything out. The air bubbles seemed to come out quite nicely and I could use it to tuck down the sides as well. And that all, that all works quite well. Uh, there was one problem, and I'm not sure if you'll see it in the sped up video, but you can sort of you can sort of see it there the edges didn't go completely down, but you'll see this later. I'll show you this in a second. Um, but for now, let's get on with what I'm doing here, which is now the uh, top section. I think this worked out maybe the easiest one, but that still doesn't say much because it's, it was the fact that you have to line it up with this, and because they, the plastic curves, you're trying to make it really, really um, accurate to the edge. Um, and I don't know why, but sitting in the car, it just felt quite, I couldn't sort of move around very much to see what I was doing. Uh, I probably should have, I, I, I'm now a little bit uh, short-sighted, so it would have helped to warm some glasses because it was actually, not that my eyesight's really bad, but it, I guess because it was just black, it's very hard to see exactly where the edge is. Um, but I, I think I managed to do it as, as best as I could. And so now then I've now sort of like, again, using the squeegee in my hands just to sort of, uh, lay that down um, and push that down on the edges as well but again this one like the middle section it just the, the side bits didn't seem to um, completely uh, cover the side panel parts which I will show in a second but the actual top part it worked really well air bubbles came out and it had one tiny one but apparently with a heat gun that would be removed. Now this part I thought would be really easy because you can remove the plastic part which is the base to the mobile phone 
holder you can actually take that it slides off if you pull it to the left and then i thought well that's good because i can i've, I've got a lot more mobility to move around it and and be able to do this but actually again this one i found really tricky i can't remember exactly why i found it tricky it was just i think it's mainly just getting that first alignment it just kept oh that was it because i'd align it on one side but then it would go off squiff on the on the edge and end up going slightly diagonal instead of completely straight as i sort of uh, as i sort of wrapped it around so that one I, it was that was really fiddly uh Okay, not as fiddly as the cup holder. The cup holder, for me, I think is the most trickiest. And actually, I would probably start from the top one and go down because they're the easier ones. And, and then you'll get a, more of a feel for how the vinyl works so that when you do the bottom cup holder one, you're kind of a bit more prepared for it. Uh, but anyway, that, that came out okay in the end. And actually, this one, which is the very, very top, right underneath where the actual monitor is, the iPad, right underneath is the, the last plastic piece. I thought that was going to be really tricky. It was a little bit tricky just to hold it into place to begin with. But once that was in place, it that was actually probably the easiest one, I guess because the surface area is the smallest. Um, actually, the last, very, very last corner on that was the hardest hardest to get in because you, you need to get a scalpel to tuck that in because the uh, squeegee just isn't quite big enough. <sighs> okay, so I'm completely done now. I think... At a glance, well, I wouldn't even say a glance. Looking at it, it looks perfect. I think it, I think it sets off the, um, it sets off the the dash the dashboard the console really well. I think it really suits the white matches actually very closely to the seats. I'd almost say you can't tell the difference. Maybe a slight, I think it's really good. The color for the white seats is perfect. The downside to having the white is that you can see where my alignment isn't perfect. In the tutorial, they use a black one, and it's hard to tell if he's got the alignment perfect or not because it's matching the black of the actual original. It's a matte black he puts down, but still, any imperfections, I think, would be very hard to see, especially on camera. For the white, for me, it's pretty obvious around the uh, cup holders where I'm pretty bothered with it. I might change it. I might get, uh, I've got a spare. I might do, do it again and see if I can get it better. I'm just, it's just annoying. It annoys me. It's one of those things that I will probably be the only one that notices it, but it's there and I would like to change that. Also on the sides, on the side panels, which you can see, uh, I that's the poorest area I think is the folds because you get these slight, I mean, maybe you could get that better if you knew exactly what you're doing, but they're just, it just feels a little bit untidy when you lift them up. You can sort of see they don't fit right to the edge um, on the sides. I don't think that's me. I think that's just the design because there's no way I could stretch that to fit. That applies to all of the all of the ones that flap up. You can see it on all of them. The edges just don't come down to me. Um, and again, where there are ones where I'm just slightly off because it's black underneath, you notice it. But would you would you notice it if you were a passenger would you notice it if you were just someone looking at the car i don't i don't think so and i think the benefit is that it it sets off it makes your car look different it matches the interior i think it's how it should have looked i think that's how tesla should have supplied the center console because personally it just even brightens up the interior a little bit more <clears throat> and it just match it just works really well so a big thumbs up for EV armor for supplying this because I think I will be keeping it uh, for sure but I will say that the advertising kind of side of it of it being what do, what do they say fastest fastest and easiest self installation on the market guaranteed that could be true because I haven't used any of the others and the others could be a complete nightmare but personally for me I didn't find this that easy to install it definitely wasn't a walk in the park it was definitely something that you have to set aside. I personally set aside about an hour to do this. Um, it says 20 minutes. I think, yeah, if you've installed a few of them, you could. But when you're reading through the tutorials, by the time you've done all that, it's an hour, It's definitely an hour's work for me. And I haven't got a perfect result. I've got something that is good enough. Uh, so I, I, I reserve judgment on if I recommend it to everyone. I don't think it is for everyone. I think if you like customizing your uh, model 3 and making it look unique 
then definitely EV Armor is, is, a, is a great way to go. It looks very durable as well. I, I can't tell yet because obviously I've only just installed it. I will probably do an update in a few months to say how it's going. Um, it definitely won't show as many marks as what the original Piano Black does on the Model 3, so that's a good plus. Um, but so a ease of use, I would, I'm going to uh, of installing. I'm going to only give it a four out of ten because the video is very good, the tutorial is very good. It's literally just trying to get everything aligned, especially when you're in a car. It one thing to say, one thing to mention is because I've got the camera gear here and I'm trying to get it in view of the camera, maybe that didn't help. Maybe that made it a bit my life a bit more difficult. But I would still say that for your average day, unless you're an actual person that installs vinyl all the time, you're going to find this tricky to do. There's no doubt about it. It's a tricky job. Uh, so 4 out of 10 for installation. Final look, I'm going to give it a 8 out of 10. Because I think from when the, when the panels are all down, how they're meant to be it looks I mean it looks great um, but as soon as you lift the panels up you can see the edges where they they don't meet they're not perfectly wrapped so I'm gonna give it a um, I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10 so final scores installation uh, four. like I said it's not easy to do especially if you're a newbie to it all uh, for finish I'm gonna give it an 8 I was tempted to give it a 7 um, I think my one I would give a seven but I do think if you spent a bit more time and you weren't sort of under pressure to do it in front of a camera and have all the camera gear you could probably get those corners a little better so which is why I've been a little bit more generous and given it an eight and for value as well which is something I haven't mentioned the price is $29.95 um, and so in the UK that would be roughly about £24 and I'm going to give that a seven the way I see it is that if you're going to get this done professionally, it would probably cost around £70 or upwards. And so as a DIY kit, it does the job. And for 24 quid, I've spent a lot more than that just down the pub. So well worth it. EV Armour have also said that I can give one of these away for a competition. So I'm going to give one of these away for you guys. All you have to do is make a comment below saying that you would like to win an EV Armour vinyl. And then I will take all of the people that have commented and put their names on a spinning wheel. And on a future video, what we will do is we will pick one of the winners and you will win your very own EV Armour vinyl. So I hope you found that review helpful in some ways. If you would like to get yourself an EV Armour vinyl or any of their other accessories on their website, then please use my coupon code, which is teslame 10 which will allow you to get 10% discount. Until next time, bye for now.